I don't, play, I don't want to be on a losing team. You know when you used to get picked last and you get picked last on, that, on the bad team? I don't, want to, I don't want to play at all. I'll go do something else. Because if I'm taking part, I'm taking part to win. I'm a winner. This is Javan Wade in Making a Portrait. I, I grew up in uh, South London, a place called Lucian, um, in England. And my childhood was what well, I would call beautiful. To be honest, I had both my parents and I grew up in a very loving, family orientated household. I have three brothers. I actually very, very vividly remember being two years old. And I just remember this flash of hearing the door knock and me crawling to the door and the door being open, seeing my mum go past me to open the door and seeing my dad come through the door. And um, as I'm crawling up to my dad and he picks me up and he gives me a big hug and and I'm just in his arms and, and, and that was, that's my most vivid moment, my most vivid memory. Every time there was like a sleepover, right? So anytime we wanted to like chill out with my cousins, there was a big thing of who's gonna ask mom or who's gonna ask dad. And um, I remember so many moments, me and my younger brother would get annoyed with my older brother. Although he was the older brother, he would never go and ask. It was always us, it was always me or my brother Jerome who would go and ask mom, can, Jazz come round, can Stefan come round, kid, you know what I mean? And you'd be just like sitting there waiting for that. Um, but yeah, growing up with four boys, it was beautiful at the same time because I feel like I learned so much. I learned so much from the brotherhood and, and you know, also what it means to be a friend. Football, you know, you guys would call it soccer, but we call it football and that was, that was my love, that was my passion. My brothers played, my cousins played, everyone was playing and even at a professional level. So that was all I knew at the time, um, as much as I you know, loved to act. But at that point, I'm, being, I'm gonna become a professional footballer. That was everything for me and that was what I wanted to do. Um, and then I just kind of got to the point where I woke up one morning and was just like, I don't love this. I don't love playing football. I'm, I'm, I'm good at it, but it's not something that I love and that I see myself doing for the rest of my life and just decided from that moment, I wanna act. The lowest point in my life, um, I would actually say when I lost my father. I would say that was definitely the lowest point in my life. I hadn't at that point lost anyone in my immediate family. Um, I had lost, you know, like grandparents and stuff, but it's, it's different. Um, when you are in a position where you're like, you feel like you're going to be with your parents forever, you know? Um, or at least until, you know, you're, you're a grown ass man. And at that point it's like, okay, cool you then start really looking after them. But to lose my dad at 20 years old, at the point in which I was on the kind of precipice of transcending, and it was very sudden. My dad, he passed away from a heart attack. Um, he was actually taking my youngest brother to the barbers and took him to the barber shop. And I remember being in um, at my boy's house at the time and I got a call from my barber and he said, uh, you gotta get to the barber shop now, like hurry to the barber shop. Like we don't know what's, what's the matter with your dad. I think he's having a heart attack. He actually ended up uh, surviving that heart attack and uh, the night in which uh, I went to see him and the whole family kind of came up and we went to see him and I remember him like laying on his bed and he was just like, just even always, always imparting words of wisdom and he was imparting, he was saying, look, just keep going, you know, you gotta that, I, fake it till you make it, you know what I mean? have the mindset and have the belief and have the structure that you're already there before you get there and that, that was literally the last conversation that I had with him. You know there's two wolves right you got the good wolf and the bad wolf which one is going to win the, the wolf in which you feed the most and so I was just in a space where I was always going to feed what would you know, bring me positivity and which would help me through it and that for me was just about doing I'm, I'm a doer and let me let me keep creating let me keep doing let me just channel that energy in order to try and you know make him proud and 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 just keep going. I remember 2016 summer, I had a conversation with my, my manager, my agent in the UK and said, look, I, I need to get a manager in the US and I wanna move there now and try to build that. And he said, yeah, let's do it. Set me up with a bunch of different meetings with different managers and um, I ended up coming uh, summer. It was the first time I ever came to LA, summer um, 2016, July. And it was a holiday and at the same time, I was with my friends, but I knew that I was gonna come and try and you know, get my foot in the door. So we would you know, party and enjoy and experience LA and Santa Monica and Sunset and the first time we saw all this stuff. But then when we wasn't doing that, I was taking meetings with different managers. And I had this meeting with um, Atlas Artists and that was the first meeting I had. And I remember saying, oh, I wanna play a superhero. And so 
looking at Atlas Entertainment's management company, Atlas Artists, knowing that they make, you know, all the DC movies, Wonder Woman, Batman, blah, blah, blah. I was like, well, this is going to be the perfect home and just try to manifest if I'm with these guys and they make superhero shows and movies, then I could be a superhero. And so the first meeting I had, I wanted to sign with them, but my UK agent said, nope, you got to take all the meetings and then, because you might like someone more. But I just knew in my heart, nah, this is it. I, I'm constantly challenging myself every day to not need or not want to have the thing, but love and appreciate the journey that amasses to that thing. Um, and yeah, that was it for me. And that kind of came full circle. And here I am now playing Cyborg and Doom Patrol. So that's amazing. Yeah, it's, 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 um, <laughs> you know, like Drake says, uh, actors and rappers are so synonymous because we want to be them and they want to be us, right? And I relate so much because as an actor, you are you don't have as much opportunity or you don't really get a chance to say what you want to say. And for me, spoken word always gave me that opportunity just to say what I wanted to say and do what I wanted to do, you know? So that was always the thing for me. And since then, I've just used it as an outlet to be able to speak my mind and share light and give an opportunity for um, people to see and hear a perspective. But my spoken word is always very um, introspective and using my experiences in order to be able to shed light on someone else's experience based on what they hear me talk about or hear what, what I've been through or my perspective on something then opens up their perspective on something. So yeah, man, I'm, I love spoken word and we'll be doing so much more of it as time goes on and using that as my outlet to say something because if it's not, you know, sometimes it takes too long to produce a film or, uh, you know, you've got something you want to say or a message and to put it in a film takes a little while, but I could just write something and perform it or just record it or, you know, and that's what spoken word gives me the outlet to do. We can't help but focus on the negative because we are built to survive. And so in the same way that if someone says something towards you, which is either negative or upsetting, and it puts you in the position where it's like, ah, oh, I felt that, it's the same way that we focus on the one negative comment. I might have like hundreds and hundreds and thousands of positive comments and you're scrolling through, great, great, great. You see that one negative comment and you focus on that. That's your survival instinct kicking in because we're built to survive. We put ourselves in a position where we want to feel like we are swimming and we are constantly surviving. But the moment that someone comes and puts a dent in our armor, whether it be a negative comment or saying something or hate, we focus on that. I just try not to allow that conversation to win. If I can't be in a game and I can't, I don't have the mindset or the opportunity where I know that I have a chance and I'm gonna do everything in my power to win, I don't wanna be involved, I don't wanna play. I don't, play, I don't wanna be on a losing team. You know when you used to get picked last and you get picked last on, that, on the bad team? I don't, wanna, I don't wanna play at all, I'll go do something else. I don't want to be, I don't want to play because if I'm taking part, I'm taking part to win. I'm a winner. I have a rule, which is the 80-20 rule, which is focus on the 20% that alleviates and allows everyone else to do the 80. And then you'll get 100% of what you want. And so that's to say, you know, you can't do the 100% by yourself. You can't even do the 80 by yourself. Or well, you can on one thing, but I'm an entrepreneur. I love to do different things. And if you want to keep jumping around to different things, you can only spare 20, 20, 20, 20, and then everyone else is running the 80, but then you have 500% when you're just putting in 20% into each of these things and, and delegate. That's something that I, I know that I struggled with growing up and now being on the other side of it, Javan, you never would have got here had you not delegated and, and found a team and relied on people to be able to help bring your vision to life, you know? So yeah, man, create the buzz and the bees will follow, baby.